Okay, Cal, I'm back for my contract dispute. I'm feeling good. I've undone the button, okay? It's Friday. We're going to talk about the future captain of the Vancouver Canucks, and we're also going to rip those fans in our comments who are criticizing your Vancouver Canucks. Let's get into it here. You're listening to Locked On Canucks. Your Locked On Canucks, your daily podcast on the Vancouver Canucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of Locked On Canucks. My name is Trevor Beggs, longtime Canucks writer and even a part-time credentialed media member for Daily Hive Vancouver. Before we get into the show, I got to tell you, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get up to $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And once again, before we dive into the main topics of the show, we got to thank you for tuning into Locked On Canucks, baby. It's your team. Every day, make sure you go subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, Kyle, we got to kick off today's episode talking about the future captain, the Vancouver Canucks, why I'm like many pundits out there. I'm pretty damn sure this is going to happen. Uh, also got to talk about uh, that episode you did yesterday. OK, talk about Ottawa versus Vancouver and all the negativity in our comments, man. Unbelievable. But I'm going to introduce you right now, buddy. You're someone who's not bringing the negativity today. For the YouTube viewers, you, they can see you in the most colorful shirt of all time, rocking the most beautiful hat I've ever seen. Kyle Bowen, how you doing, buddy? What's up? Okay, somebody's got to bring the swagger to the West Coast, the best coast of uh, Canada when it comes to hockey in the NHL, okay? Uh, someone's got to have that energy, okay? Somebody's got to have that delusion. Uh, sometimes delusion leads to the solution, okay? And we're kind of backed up against the wall. Let's be honest. Let's be real. Uh, this year has to work out in one way or another because <laughs> if it doesn't work out this year, uh, let's not finish that sentence, okay? Anyways, Kyle Bowen, Trevor Beggs, Locked on Canucks. Excited to have this conversation because, bro, I think everyone listening to this conversation heading into the weekend is going to feel uh, – optimistic is not the right word about the Vancouver Canucks. They're just going to feel – they're going to feel more – like a member of the Vancouver Canucks. You know that saying, right? We are all locked on Canucks. I mean, we are all Canucks. I do think, again, uh, the city's missing some swagger, and rightfully so, right? Not, the, the wins aren't there. The wins aren't there. Uh, backed up against the wall. A, 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 lot of, a, lot of, a lot of correct thinking, if you really think about it. But again, delusion has to take place, and I think we're going to give people delusion today, and it's going to lead to better spirits which may lead to a better outcome this season for the Vancouver Canucks. Anywho, let's start off with something that is not delusional, something that is not assuming the best. It's just the truth, and that's Quinn Hughes becoming the captain of the Vancouver Canucks. Now, before we get into Quinn Hughes becoming the captain of the Vancouver Canucks, allegedly, I got to say this, okay? I think people out there are saying that uh, this is the obvious because A, Quinn Hughes is a great player, and B, because he's a great leader, and C, because Pedersen doesn't have a contract after the season. Uh, let's be honest. Let's be real. If the organization thinks that Pedersen is the better leader on the team, uh, the contract should not get in the way of him being the captain of this team. You know what I'm saying? If he if he's the better leader, he'd be named the captain. It's just the truth. If he was more suited for the job, he'd be named the captain. The contract doesn't have, I, I don't think it has a lot to do with it. Let's be real. Let's be honest. For real. The Qu they're going to name Quinn Hughes the captain because he's the right guy for the job. And I've been warming up to this more and more throughout our days on the show, and I'm excited to hear uh, what you have to say about the inevitable. And again, that's Quinn Hughes becoming the captain of the Vancouver Canucks. Yeah, and, you know, to be honest, uh, you know, honest uh, honest people here, you and I, Kyle, uh, I think we were on the Pedersen for captain bandwagon back in the spring. But for me, the big turning point, and every day is no, I've mentioned this before, the big turning point was Talkett's comments about both players at the end of season media availability, just gushing about Hughes's leadership abilities and how he's really grown into the role and then kind of was much more muted in terms of Pedersen's praise. So like you said, Kyle, it's not just Pedersen not having a contract. I think that does play a small part in it. Uh, but I think the Canucks still see him as a long-term piece. So it's not, that's, that's a small part of the equation. I think the bigger part of the equation is that they just feel that Hughes is the better leader. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's, I say it's pretty much got to come down to those two. I mean, history has shown us otherwise. I think of, you know, Derek England, you know, kind of being the, I guess he was assistant in Vegas, or Dave Anderchuk comes into Tampa, veteran leader there. 
uh, helps them win a cup. So it doesn't necessarily have to be your star players who are captains. Uh, but that being said, I, I'm pretty sure that Rataka wants to name a captain heading into next season. So, you know, you look at his one other main head coaching stint in the NHL, and it was with the Arizona Coyotes. So when he stepped in, in that 2017-18 season, it was an interesting time because Shane Doan had just retired uh, the year prior. So the uh, Coyotes went into that season without a captain. They didn't name a captain for the entire season. They sucked. They are one of the worst teams in the league. 29 wins in 82 games. But next season, lo and behold, they named a captain and they named Oliver ekman Larson captain. So whether it was the right choice or not, up for debate. But that being said, I think it just shows that under Rick Tockett, he wanted to get to know his team for a year and then name a captain. And I, I mm. see something very similar here. I would be quite honestly shocked at this point if they don't name Hughes the captain on opening night. Yeah, and uh, we heard it today from Elliot Friedman. I'll, I'll play the clip right here. And the other thing I just wanted to mention is we were talking about Elias Pettersson's interview with us in uh, Stockholm. And I got to tell you, the money is on Quinn Hughes as captain ah. of the Vancouver Canucks. I think there are a lot of people like to see that. Certainly Quinn Hughes. That's an interesting one. And I like it. Let's say you. I, I like it. I, I think Hughes really cares. Like to me, your captain has to care. Like really care. And I think that guy really cares. And yeah, with that and with what you just said, the Canucks are going to name a captain this year, and it's going to be Quinn Hughes. And I heard Rick Dollywall on Halford and Bruff earlier today, and he said something that made a lot of sense. And I know that Quinn Hughes uh, maybe had a little slip up in his career, uh, maybe a couple of years ago, where he might have plateaued for like 50 games, 50 games, 60 games max. But he is definitely one of those players. And again, Rick Dollywall alluded to this, that brings it in the summer, and he gets way better. And that's the thing. Over the last two seasons, three seasons, I guess. Quinn Hughes has gotten way better in all facets of his game. And I think he's going to do the same this year. And it's, it, it should be noted and it should be uh, put up on a pedestal. Like talk, it did talk about how he's the vocal guy in the room. He's the leader. He's that guy. And he wants to be, and we have to bring it up again. You were there. I wasn't, but a lot of, a lot of people from the city were there covering this team. It was a big day for the Vancouver Canucks, the end of season press conference after a chaotic year. And there's one guy wearing a suit from that main core. And it's Quinn Hughes. He wants to be that guy. He wants to be that guy. It's just the truth. He's taking it serious. This, this job as a Vancouver Canucks, his duty as a Vancouver Canuck, I feel as if he's a Canuck 365. You know what I'm saying? He's that guy. Yeah. And bro, end of the day, we can have the debate, when, whether it be like Patterson and Hughes, who's the better player, who, who's the better example. Dude, both these guys, and we're going to get to this in like seven or eight minutes too. Uh, when we're talking about bringing the swagger, both these guys have the ability to be, again, under that. Like, for Quinn Hughes, he has that ability to be right below that tier, right below Kale McCarr when it comes to the tier of best defenseman in the league. And Pedersen has that ability to be right below that tier of Connor McDavid. Like, those guys are like 96 overall, 97 overall, overall potential when it's all said and done. I, I'm, I'm excited to see what some winning will do for their confidence and their trajectory. And I still think there's room on the table for these guys to become way better players, which is a scary thing for anyone playing the Vancouver Canucks. Okay. There you go, yeah, man. I completely agree, man. And I, you know, one of the point I want to make about Hughes and the captaincy is, you know, Quinn Hughes and Brady Kachuk. I know we've talked a lot of Ottawa versus Vancouver uh, this week on the show, but Brady, Brady Kachuk and Quinn Hughes are, you know, apparently really good friends. Some might even say best friends mm -hmm. and, Brady Kachuk's the captain in Ottawa. So I think for Hughes, it's like he can go to one of his best friends and kind of talk to him about being a captain in the Canadian market. Now, granted, mm. you know, no offense to Ottawa, but Vancouver, a little bit more of a pressure cooker than Ottawa. Ooh. But nonetheless... Better nonetheless, hockey market. Say it, dude. Better hockey market. Oh, 100%. And the arena's in downtown. It's not in the middle of nowhere Ooh. like it is in Ottawa. Man, I'm like, I'm halfway to my uh, in-laws place in the country. Uh, when I pass by uh, the Canadian Tire Center. It's, it's such a weird spot. But anyways, that's beside the point. Uh, but yeah, I think for Quinn Hughes, it's again, not only he comes from a hockey family, they're close to the Kachucks. And mm -hmm. yeah, one of his best friends is a captain in the Canadian market. I think that, uh, that also makes a difference when you can have someone uh, to kind of like rely on and talk to who's going through a similar situation. I, I, would, put, I would put both Pedersen and Hughes on this boat 
I feel as if they're pretty stoic too. They're pretty calm individuals in comparison to a guy like JT Miller, who, you know, there are people out there who want JT Miller to be the captain because of his, of his emotion and how he shows it. But the thing about that, like, again, polarity to everything, you don't want to have an emotion, a super emotional captain, maybe because of how he would deal with losses. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Like, I, I feel as if, the leader has to hold it together, stay calm, cool, collected, even through the BS. And I know the Canucks, I'm guaranteeing it. I'm guaranteeing it. The Canucks are going to take the next step next season. But with that being said, there's going to be a two-game losing streak. There's going to be a three-game losing streak. It just happens. And you need your leader to calm things down and keep it stoic and, and keep it confident and not keep it so emotional because there's a job to do. Quinn Hughes, Captain Can America. I think I wrote that in the thumbnail, okay? he's he's the guy and. I think he's going to he's going to embrace it completely and not get caught up in it. I know it's tough to be a, a captain in a Canadian market, especially again in Vancouver, but there's something about that guy and we've seen it throughout his career. The dude is just a true professional and again one of the best at what he does in the NHL. And just for like argument's sake and it's it's not that important, okay? Like uh, Quinn Hughes doesn't like he doesn't care about the debates. I don't think he cares about the debates. I don't care that he he hears that, you know, pe people don't really mention him when it comes to, like, the best defenseman in the league. He may be a little underrated, blah, blah, blah. But when he gets to see and he's that guy in Vancouver, people are going to really understand, uh, again, how good this guy is. He's better than Tim Sutzla, okay? He's better than Brady Kachuk. We had those comments in the – we had people in the comments saying that, dude, they, they take Kachuk over Quinn Hughes. Uh, th there's not a player better than Tim Sutzla on the Vancouver – we'll get to that in a couple of minutes, man. A anything else yeah. you want to say? No, I think we should just get to that on the other side. I know you mentioned Hughes and the Norris quickly. Uh, I will say that uh, article article came out today, uh, odds from MGM Ontario. Uh, Hughes has the fourth best odds to win the Norris behind Kale McCart, Adam Fox, and Rasmus Dahlin. Can, can okay. I say something? Can I say something? And I, I actually want to ask you the question, okay? So what, what do you think what – what are the advantages, again, that, that Quinn Hughes is a part of that family? Uh, again, probably the most prominent hockey family in hockey in the moment based on talent too. Like we're talking about the potential to have like three kids who are top 10, top 15 in their position across the league, you know, for real. So uh, what are the advantages of a guy like that being a captain in a Canadian market? Uh, can you connect some dots? Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think the main advantage is that Hughes has probably, you know, grown up in a very competitive household uh, his whole life, right? And his dad, obviously, has been kind of renowned for really training those three boys hard. Uh, you know, he was born in Florida, played a lot of hockey in Michigan. Um, like, he's been used to the pressure his whole life. And I think he's probably been doubted for a good chunk of his life, too, for being undersized. So, um, you know, we talked about him kind of having ice in his veins and there's a few Canucks like that, including kind of Pedersen and Demko, mm -hmm. but I think Hughes is the perfect mentality for it. Perfect, man. Perfect. Okay. Locked on Canucks, your Canucks every day, Kyle Bauman, Trevor Beggs. It's not optimism, baby. It's not optimism. It's a little bit of realism. And you know, what's real dude. We're from the West coast, the best coast of Canada. Okay. Uh, there was, w there was one time in our lives for a long time where it was fun being a Vancouver Canucks fan. We felt confident. And I know they haven't proven that on the standings in recent history, but can we just be a little delusional in September? Can we just be a little delusional and lean on the fact that we have Quinn Hughes and Elias Pettersson taking the next step and they've done, they did so last year and they're going to do so again. And maybe Thatcher Demko will get back to, you know, being the Vesna guy and put all those things in a pot, a way better team than the Ottawa senators. Anyways, let's cut Let's get to a break. Uh, Begsy, who, who are we shouting out? All right, more about uh, Canucks versus Ottawa and our negative commenters on the other side. But first, football season is about to kick off. Hey, it's already kicked off. Okay, FanDuel kicked off last night with Kyle's uh, least favorite team, the Detroit Lions, <laughs> pulling off the upset over the Kansas City Chiefs. And guess what? FanDuel is giving you a chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. So, Kyle, if you wanted to pick... Those Detroit Lions doing the Super Bowl, guess what? If you did that a couple days ago, you wouldn't want a few bucks last night, okay? Instead of betting on your Green Bay Packers to get it done, okay? Also, bet, you know, whoever you pick, just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. 
you can use your bonus bets on spreads, player props, overs, unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. People, people, before we get back to the show, baby, I got to tell you that new episodes of Locked On Canucks will be available wherever you stream podcasts and on YouTube at 4.20 p.m. for no reason at all, okay? New episodes every day at 4.20 p.m. Again, wherever you stream podcasts and on YouTube. Let's get back to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Yes, back to this episode of Locked on Canucks. Your Canucks every day, Trevor Bags, Kyle Bowen doing what we got to do. And that's, again, I don't think the word is optimism. I don't want to, I don't want to force my fans or the fans of this show, sorry, to, to think another way, you know, they're educated and they're less optimistic slash more realistic based on stats and facts and reality, right? The NHL is a tough league. The NHL is a tough league. I get it. I get it. But would it hurt you that much to just pretend, imagine that things are going to go really, really well? A, because you're a fan. But more importantly, like it kind of has to this season. It kind of has to this season. This team's not getting another Elias Pettersson. It's just the truth. It kind of has to happen this season. And there's a recipe there. There's an equation there. And do you have to sprinkle in a little bit of a miracle? You kind of have to. But could it happen to this city? Probably not, but I said probably. And why not believe it? Again, Locked on Canucks, Trevor Beggs, Kyle Bowen. And yesterday, I dropped that episode, right? Yes, <laughs> Yesterday, baby. Move those shoulders, baby. Move those shoulders. Yesterday, I was solo. And I dropped an episode talking about the Ottawa Senators and the Vancouver Canucks. I do want to have a debate with the people over there at Locked On Senators. Great people. Brandon, Ross, great people. Great people. That being said, I dropped the episode and the comments were flooded by Ottawa Senators fans who would, first of all, they would would not take Pedersen or Hughes over Sutsla and Kachuk any day. Any day, which I get. There's some bias there. You got to pick your team. But the one thing I didn't get was the lack of Canucks fans who watched the program, who didn't participate in the debate or defended their boys. But what is this? We lost our swagger. Now, Begsy, am I, am I asking too much? Am I asking these people to lie? Maybe just a little bit. But where's the spirit, dude? Where's the spirit? Man, that's, uh, that's interesting. I do wonder if Senators fans, you know, we had the Benning bros here in Vancouver. I wonder if it's like the Dorian dudes over there uh, in Ottawa, you know? I, I get it, man. A fan base is going to be jaded and kind of support their boys. But what has Ottawa done? I mean, what has Vancouver done? Fair enough. But, you exactly. know, at least Hughes, Hughes has been in, you know, that Norris Calder conversation, you know? Uh, Pedersen was in that Selkie conversation. He won the Calder. And, yeah, I, I don't know. I think you told me there was one comment that said no one in the league would trade Brady Kachuk for Quinn Hughes, which Dude. absolutely blew my mind. Dude, <laughs> it's just the truth. That that's the that's the comments, that's the comments on the last episode, and they were so heavy, Ottawa Senators. And whenever Vancouver fans did chip in, it was fans. And I get, I get it. I'm not, I can't, I'm not knocking these fans completely. I get it. They're being realistic, it in their opinion. But when the Canucks fans did get in, in involved in the comments, they were taking Ottawa side. And I wasn't comparing the Canucks to Colorado. I wasn't. I was comparing them to Ottawa. And yes, I get it. Ottawa did the quote-unquote right thing. They blew it up. They rebuilt it, right? That's the truth. That's why they were able to get a lot of top-end talent and inevitably sign this top-end talent long-term and commit to a core group of guys that are talented, but they haven't proven that that's the recipe to success, to get some dubs in the NHL. I, 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 thought, I thought we were comparing nickels to nickels. And at worst, maybe nickels to dimes. But again, based on the participation in the comments, man, uh, I guess what I'm trying to do in this segment of the show is like r- really trying to get a grip of like how people are feeling about the Vancouver Canucks going into next season. And by the sounds of it, 
I feel as if people are really expecting this team to do the same, and that's be mediocre at best and not pull off a, a bit of a miracle, even though they kind of have to. They kind of have to for Patterson, but I was hearing this on the radio again today as well, and I believe it as well. Dude, if they don't pull it off this season and take that gigantic leap, like they're going to lose season ticket buyers for sure. People are going to leave. People are going to give up on this core, this regime. Like it kind of has to happen this year. And even though I'm sounding desperate when it comes to me connecting optimism to the season, I'm also, again, sprinkling in the fact that there still is a chance. Quinn Hughes, Pedersen, and Demko coming back to form. Like, that's actually a recipe. We actually haven't seen those three things connect pretty much until the like the bubble time. Like, if those three things connect, it could happen because there's not a lot of teams across the league that have that trifecta across the board. Yeah, I think in Ottawa, probably the big X factor is Corpus Allo. Like, I would take Demko over, over Corpus Allo any day, but goaltending is also weird. You know what I mean? Um, Dude, if, if Demko look- had one and a half, if Demko had one eye and one arm, I'd still take Demko over Corpus Allo, okay? <laughs> That's the kind of swagger we need, man, honestly. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what's up with our listeners. Maybe they were in in, uh, in the dumps yesterday. You know, maybe my contract dispute with Locked On over 25 bucks was, uh, was getting everybody else. I'm not quite sure, but. You know, Vancouver and Ottawa are, are are very even teams right now. I would take Vancouver because I like their stars better. Ooh. And I, I don't even know if I want to give out Ottawa anything right now. I mean, I, I like kind of the swagger that you're feeling, uh, to be honest. Um, I, I will say this, like, between, you know, Vancouver and Ottawa right now, looking at the odds for next season, okay? Vancouver's projected to be 10th in the West, according to odds makers. Ottawa's projected to be 11th in the East. We're talking about two bad teams who got to prove it, okay? Mm-hmm. And like I said, the Canucks next season matters for them. The next season also really matters for the Senators. Because I think the Canucks are at the stage now where they've fired everyone, they've cleaned house. It's on the players. In Ottawa, they haven't cleaned house. I think, you know, if they have a bad season, they're going to start firing people and then figure it out. So, um, a- interesting spots to be for both teams. But I think the Canucks are just maybe a little further ahead in their cycle. And, and maybe this is a conversation for another episode, but we need to talk about maybe the best division in the NHL. I would argue it's probably the Pacific because I think there's six teams that can make the playoffs. I look at the the Atlantic and you could argue six if you think the Ottawa Senators are a playoff team. I'm just still not quite sure they're there. Look, the Senators have done a lot of wrong things, but again, they blew it up. They rebuilt it. They got some, they got some star-studded talent up there, but they still got to get the job done. They got to learn how to win consistently in the regular season. In my opinion, they're on the same boat as the Vancouver Canucks. And I just, again, feel as if it can't be this bad. It can't be this bad where Canucks fans collectively feel as if they can't even compare themselves to an 11th place team in the other conference. It's like, dude, Pedersen and Quinn Hughes and Demko, again, hasn't come together yet. Uh, a lot of the things we're saying about the Senators, yeah, they they relate to the Vancouver Canucks as well. But if you if you're a Vancouver Canucks fan, there has to be a little bit of West Coast bias in you, especially if we're not talking about comparing the Canucks to Tampa Bay. Where's the swagger? Just a little bit, just a little bit, and we need that in the comments in that last episode again, because we're having a debate in a couple episodes with the big boys. On the locked on NHL circuit, the locked on senators, they they do things right. They're great guys, but I feel, I'm going into that debate thinking that we're going to win, Begsy. I'm not falling down. I'm not falling down on all, all all four limbs. Okay, straight up, straight up. I'm defending the team. I'm defending the West Coast, and I'm I'm reaching for a miracle because the organization needs it. But <laughs> real talk, based on again what I'm taking from the last episode, the fan base needs it. You feel as if you're part of the organization slash the city of Vancouver when the hockey team is good. You, you feel more like yourself when the team you cheer for is instilling hope slash escapism in your life, okay? Leisure in your life. Leisure is very important, okay? Uh, that's why being a sports fan is the best, especially when your sports team is doing well. And I do believe that this time around, things are going to be a little bit differently, different, and at at best, you know, again, I like the Ottawa Senators fans. Don't get me wrong. They're good people. They deserve the best as well. Like, I think we're going to be on par. But it's not, again, when they ran the poll, 97% of the people thought Ottawa was a way better team than the Vancouver Canucks. 
Dude, at best, they, at best is jo- uh, that Josh Norris guy. At best, is he going to be as good as primetime JT Miller? We still have a couple years of JT Miller. You just said Corpus Allo versus Demko. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they got Jake Sanderson, but you know who we have? Philip Peronic. We have Pius Suter. Who do you guys have? A 45 year old Mike Fisher? We got Ian Cole. Who do you guys have? A 45 year old Anton Volchenkov? <laughs> exactly, dude. Uh, I, I love it, man. And I think we a got lot of Connor, we got Connor Garland. Who do you guys have? Dean McCammon? Wow. That's a dude. flex right there. Dude. Um, I think some, some listeners might be wondering like, why do these guys keep talking about Vancouver and Ottawa? And to me, it's honestly a fascinating debate because it's mm-hmm. two teams in very similar uh, stages of their rebuild, I guess if you want to call it, who need to start making some noise. And they're both in Canada and we need some more Canadian representation in the NHL playoffs. So, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I think we should table it, save it for the mm-hmm. debate with the big boys over at Locked On Senators. Kyle, I think at the end of the show here, best for last common corner, a fan, you know, despite our fans not stepping up to the plate and defending mm-hmm. the Canucks, I think one fan had some swagger. So let's Ooh. get into it here. Common corner, Locked On Canucks. Okay, okay. We are back here on Locked on Canucks. Kyle Bowen and Trevor Beggs. I know, man. I know. We're all over the place today. It's Friday. We're having a little bit of fun, but, man, we're also trying to just raise up the spirit, man. It, it matters. It matters. This season matters. And a little bit of belief can go a long way. Again, I understand where the realism is coming from. We got smart people over here on the West Coast, the best coast, but sometimes you got to be delusional. Sometimes you got to use your imagination. And sometimes you can't lose a swagger debate to the to the 11th place team, the 12th place team, the Eastern. You get what I'm saying? Anyways, Locked on Canucks, your Canucks every day. Comic Corner coming up in a couple of minutes. We got a comment from the podcast side of things, uh, something that we've been uh, preaching for. Again, if you want to get involved in Comic Corner, you don't you don't have to watch the show on YouTube. Just leave us a review on Spotify. You can reply to episodes and on Apple Podcasts. Just, just leave us a review and, and do what this listener did, okay? The listener wrote down, read this on the show. And again, we're going to read that comment in two minutes. But first, I want to talk about Pedersen before we do in two minutes. Uh, I said that, I, I think I took this train of thought from Sat. He tweeted it out, okay? Uh, do you agree with me when I said when I said that if the Canucks believed that Pedersen was the better leader, even though he has one year left on his deal, if they believe, though, again, that he was the better leader by far and away, they'd still name him the captain or maybe shelf the captaincy until that got sorted out. Am I talking crazy or is that the truth? I think it's the truth. If he was the better leader, I just don't think they believe he's the better leader. Mm-hmm. I mean, I kind of brought up Tampa Bay as an example before, but um, and, and funny, I fell down this rabbit hole because Rick Talkett started coaching them, but I forgot. Vinny LeCavalier was the captain of the Tampa Bay Lightning. I think he was... At the time, he might have been the youngest captain or one of the youngest captains named in NHL history. But then when Dave Anderchuk, good old grizzled vet Dave Anderchuk came in, they stripped Vinny LeCavalier of the sea, gave it to Anderchuk, went on to win the cup, and then gave it back to Vinny LeCavalier. So it's just, honestly, the captaincy, like, I think the debate's fascinating and I, and I love talking about it. But at the end of the day, it's just a letter on a chess, man. It doesn't, doesn't change a whole lot, to be honest with you. Like, there's 10 teams right now, including the Vancouver Canucks. That's one third of the NHL who doesn't have a captain. There you go. Well, thanks for answering that. Just want to clear that up. It was in my mind. Uh, let's get on to the best part of the show, Comment Corner. Welcome to Comment Corner, powered by paraphrasing. This comment is from our friend Urato. A boys PT is taking the next step and leading the boys to the next spectrum. If he has the same line mates, he's putting up 50 goals and 120 points. I don't think a dude named Tim could do that now, can he? There you go. Okay, there you go. Is Tim Sutsla putting up 120 points? 50 goals, 120 points. Is he going to be nominated for a Selkie too? Is he the next is he, is he the next Sergey Fedorov? Multi Stanley Cup winning type of guy? I don't think so. I don't think so. Anyways, thanks for the comment via Apple Podcast. This is the swagger we need, man. This is the swagger we need if Pedersen elevates again. And if Demko does his thing, and if Quinn Hughes elevates again, and there's some confidence, and there's some more structure, and Rick Tockett, who happens to be a way better coach than DJ Smith, or whatever the guy's name is, oh, the Canucks can do something. I like the swagger, man. That's the energy we need. Okay, the hope. 
And if it falls, if it falls on its face, this type of optimism, whatever, we're used to it. But let's be a little delusional right now. Why not? Why not? Why not? You know, okay, Trevor, in life, you know, we always procrastinate. We're, we always say things like, oh, I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to do this tomorrow. I'm going to reach my goals. And then we lie to ourselves. Uh, why not take that risk on the other end of the spectrum and potentially lie, but instill some hope in the fan base, okay? For real. For real. Well, it's that old, it's that old mentality that, you know, you, uh, you say you say something you don't believe out loud enough, you're eventually going to believe it. But I, I, I do believe, and I shout out to the commenter, I do believe Pedersen can get to that level. And he's easily a level above Tim Stutzla. I mean, Tim, Tim Stutzla, I say Tim go Stupula? prove it, but don't go prove it. Was Did it? Call Tim, Tim, St- Tim Stutzla. Oh, I thought you said Tim Stupidla. <laughs> no, that is what I said. Thanks for catching <laughs> that. Uh, um, <laughs> that's like <laughs> pulling out the kindergarten level insults here on Locked On Canucks. Uh, but in terms of the comments, you're saying 120 points. Like, we're literally looking at Pedersen, 10 more goals, 10 more assists, right? He'd be at 50 goals and 70 points. Last season, he had 39 goals and 63 assists. So I think he can get there. Scoring is going up at the NHL. I think Pedersen's got another level to go. And I think he's motivated AF to get it done and be one of the best players in the NHL. For real, man. And I think he's going to shoot the puck more. I really think so. And I think another guy who's going to shoot the puck more is Kuzmenko. Now, this guy did mention that if, yes, if Pedersen has the same line mates the whole season, then this is possible. I know training camp hasn't started yet. We know he's going to play with Kuzmenko, and I know that you've been on the Brock Besser boat for a long time. Uh, September what? September 9th right now? September 8th, I think? Are you, you still on that boat? You still on that wagon? 100%, like Brock Besser's 100%, the only guy? Yeah. Well, I mean, in my opinion, yeah. I, that's just the line I want to see, and you know, a line might be together throughout the whole season. Even like the uh, the perfection line in Boston with Pasternak, Bergeron, and Marshawn. Even they had some shifts apart, right? But in general, they stuck together. And I think the best course of action for the Canucks is sticking arguably your three most talented players on the same line, letting them cook, letting them figure it out, um, and getting the most out of Besser too. Because, you know, the Canucks, if they're going to take the next level, guys like Besser got to step up. And you had, had chemistry with Pedersen in the past. That's what I want to see. Kuzmenko, Pedersen, Besser. I think it could be one of the best lines in the NHL. There you go, Bexy. I love your spirit, man. You're the darkest guy on the program, but deep down I know that you have a lot of hope <laughs> in this team. Not not winning the Stanley Cup. We know that, but taking the next step with this group of players. A group of players, again, Demko, Hughes, and Pedersen and company, that in comparison to other teams across the league who are kind of in the same realm as the Vancouver Canucks, as far as the tier goes and as far as where they've been in the standings, I do think that, again, these guys have the potential to take that next step and take leaps further than the other teams. And that other group of teams does include the Ottawa Senators, led by DJ Smith. Yo, come on, Rick Talk. If it's D- come, is, that guy, is that the name, DJ Smith? DJ Smith? Dude, you should be playing in the clubs, not coaching an NHL team, for real. <laughs> Anyways, another episode of Locked on Canucks, gone just like that. Uh, let's get out of here. Uh, bring the swagger, okay? On that last episode, uh, we talked about, again, the Ottawa Senators versus the Vancouver Canucks. We are having a debate with the big boys. And, bro, defend your boys. It's not about defending Trevor Beggs and Kyle Bowne. It's about defending your dignity and Quinn Hughes and Pedersen. These guys are literally saying that they take Brady Kachuk over Pedersen or Brady Kachuk over Hughes. And come on. Anyways, Trevor Beggs, sign us out. That's ridiculous, okay? But, uh, you know, we're going to keep it on here on Locked On Canucks, whether it's good, whether it's bad. But, you know, if someone's coming at our boys from Ottawa, we're going to keep it optimistic, baby. So, again, shout out to you for listening, whether you're an everyday or an occasional listener, or if it's your first time listening, welcome to the family, baby. Next week, come on, it's September, baby. It's a good time of year. Training camps, still about a week and a half away from kicking off. But Kyle and I, we got to get into the Pacific Division. Is it the best division in hockey? Training camp battles, bold predictions, and also, can the Canucks bring back an old friend on a PTO? All that's coming up in the next few episodes. But for now, I'm Trevor Banks at Guys Compound, and you've been listening to Locked On Canucks. Dude, Trevor's wife is from Ottawa, and he's more loyal than most of the fan base <laughs> that watches this show. Come on, man. Absorb that spirit. Anything is possible. Enjoy your weekend. Peace. <laughs>